Hi friends! Today we are covering another brush line available on Fude Beauty, Mizuho. If it's your first time here though, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. If you want to check out my virtual class schedule and to see what I'm up to outside of makeup, then please sign up for my newsletter down below. A huge thank you to Fude Beauty once again for collaborating with me on this video. It is not sponsored, but they do send me the brushes to cover them, to go over the details, to show the demos as I love to do. I have become quite the Fude nerd, so I have a lot to learn though, however, over the last few years in introducing different types of Fude in terms of the brush types and also the brush brands. Today we are highlighting Mizuho and before we get into the actual brushes, let's get into some of the brand history. Mizuho brushes are informed by a history of calligraphy brush making in the Kumano region of Japan, a skill that dates back 1300 years. Their ongoing pursuit of craftsmanship is founded in using age-old techniques combined with the continuous development of makeup brushes of outstanding quality. Each of their brushes is handmade and subject to strict quality control at all stages from bristle selection and sorting to the removal of misaligned hairs, peak formation, setting and inserting of hair, and handle mounting and inspection. Mizuho's name draws on a respected word in Japan meaning fresh ears of rice. A brush's bristles are the most vital part of the makeup brushes made in Kumano, similar to a fresh ear of rice. This is the respect all employees uphold. Mizuho has a proud history of 180 years of traditional Kumano brush making. Mizuho holds a total of six different series under the brand. Today we are covering two. The CMP series is a chic sleek series with handles of matte black that frame the high quality bristles. The handles are lightweight and sturdy with an attractive minimal appeal. And then we have the MB series, Mizuho's flagship series, bringing together their advanced brush making techniques, a focus on functionality and sophisticated design. The matte black handles are contoured to fit your hand, capped with brushed silver ferrules and natural bristles. The goal of the series is to establish a beautiful design that you will be delighted to use. And the MB series from Mizuho received the Good Design Award in 2011. Congratulations Mizuho! They also have their TS series, PM series, portable series, and the BF series, as well as their cases, which not only holds the brushes, but is an actual towel texture that you can use to wipe as well as store. I was excited to feature this brand on my channel because many of you know that Fude brushes can be very expensive. You might feel discouraged in feeling that they're not in your budget to buy. And what's the big deal over Fude anyway? Japanese made brushes are hand bundled with premium natural hair. And the reason that's significant in regards to makeup application is that the natural hair fiber is remain intact, whereas brushes that are machine made rely on a laser cut function to shape the brush and that harsh cross section does not yield the smoothest blend nor does it feel silky on the skin. When you have to rely on an artisan's hand bundling to actually shape the brush that will determine its function, its density, the skill requirement for that task is a lot higher and therefore is reflected in the price. Also what type of natural hair that's being used to construct the brush, what type of wood for the handle, and what type of metal for the ferrule. The Mizuho series comes in several series as you learn, but today we're focusing on two that I feel are reasonably priced that you can get the same Fude experience and not break the bank. Let's start off with the CMP series and to kick it off, I present the CMP 510. The liquid foundation brush retails for $29. That's not bad fam and I know you might be thinking $29 is still a lot but made in Japan okay you still have that high level of craftsmanship and performance in the brushes possession furthermore this is one of their best selling liquid foundation brushes I had also featured it in my liquid foundation video that I will post up above in the card and down below in a link this brush is made out of synthetic fibers but the dome shaped design I feel makes it 
incredibly versatile for you to blend your foundation not only liquid as i do here i apply a cocktail of the suku cream foundation and the lisa eldridge seamless skin foundation on one side using the brush and using the same cmp 510 brush i then go in with the suku glow powder foundation the softness of the synthetic fibers makes it so that it plays well with different textures but i love the brush's density it's not so dense that there's no flow on the skin which i think makes it ideal for not only you to pounce on your foundation you can swirl and buff the foundation as you see here in the demo you can strike it down using a pull down technique whatever technique you choose to use this brush with you will be successful also noteworthy is the brush head size although not ideal for under eye concealer blending i can still get away with it i just have to use the corners of the brush and because of the round size i can nudge it right here under the eye and still get the blend done especially if i want to edit how many brushes i'm bringing along for the ride if i'm going to maddie's house or bay's house and as you can probably suspect great for cream cheek products incredible with cream blush application because of the round dome shape it pounces intuitively onto the apples of your cheeks and makes the blend spread effortlessly and have the edges blur instantly and all for $30 not bad and the brushes design is sleek it's modern it's minimalist it looks like a solid workhorse brush and if you prefer to use synthetic brushes for your foundation for your cheek tasks or just for your makeup in general this is a great little brush next we have the cmp 515 a cheek brush made with gray squirrel and socoho goat hair and this retails for 69 dollars now this is a little more expensive while i understand that's a little higher in price range the fact that you get some gray squirrel in this brush which is one of the more premium natural hairs that is used to construct brushes with sokohogo it's a goat hair blend it is soft easily became a fast cheek brush favorite is pinched on the side with an oval ferrule and i prefer these types of shapes for cheek products because you can see there's a slight taper but it's mostly round here on the top and what is that great for everything loose powder application as you see here and because of the pinched ferrule you can fit the edge of the brush nicely into the hollows of your cheeks for some clean powder bronzing application phenomenal for cheek powder blush application the brush practically wraps itself around the cheeks which makes it just seamless to apply product there if it, it feels intuitive just look at that ha huh. Huh. And I prefer Gray Squirrel and Goat Hair Blend simply because as I feel Gray Squirrel and Sokoho when combined amplify each other's benefits. You have the softness and just beautifully blurring effect from the Gray Squirrel, but you also have a little bit of that workhorse pickup from the Sokoho Goat Hair, especially if you're looking just to use one brush with different powder products. You need a little bit of coverage, but you don't need too much. You want that workhorse experience from your brush, but you still want that blurring soft focus finish. Okay, both the Gray Squirrel and the Sokoho Blend will deliver those elements for you. And the fact that you have it all in one brush, again, it is designed like the CMP 510, sleek in design, and I adore the brushed matte finish for the brush. It makes it so sleek and just elegant and it's not too dense but it's not too floppy either you have a little bit of pushback here which i prefer because when a brush is so so soft i think that's great for finishing your makeup so you don't disturb the product that's underneath the bristles this however as you layer your products will not disturb the makeup that lies underneath for instance your bronzer and your blush but it's still going to lay down the product and it's still going to blend it well close-ups here you could just see that my texture look look at that skin fam and again it is all due to the fact that the ends of the brush remain intact that is vital for ensuring a soft focus blurred blend because those fine tipped edges of the hairs glide over your skin like silk while at the same time provide even product application 
that smooth and silky on the skin. And lastly, we have the CMP527 eyeshadow brush. This is a mixture of gray squirrel and pony, and it retails for $18. This is a great little blender brush here. It has a more pronounced point, as many of my crease diffusers as I like to refer to them. What I adore about this brush, however, is that although it has gray squirrel, the pony puts a little bit of that Mm -mm, back into the brush. It's not so flimsy and floppy that it's not going to have reasonable product pickup or not move the product across your lid. It's also not going to move your skin. So this is definitely one of the more denser crease brushes that I own. If you have smaller eyes, you can get away with using this because of the pronounced taper. You could fit it nicely into your crease. However, if you prefer to use a smaller brush, one that I will cover in this video that I think is great for smaller eyes. You can still use the brush to blur the edges of your shadow that rise above your crease line. You could use this for under the eye powder setting or even some pinpoint highlighting on the cheekbones. What stand out to me is the fact that you have some gray squirrel in here. I don't know what the ratio is to pony hair, but gray squirrel is a premium natural hair and to have it in an eye brush that retails for $18. I think it's a great introduction to gray squirrel if you wanna get a feel of it, how it blends, how it works with your different eyeshadows or even different products, as I mentioned, that you can use this with on other portions of your face. There's one more brush I wanted to mention, the CMP 521, the eyeshadow brush made with pony hair. This retails for $12. I'll put it up next to me. Unfortunately, I do not have this brush however I wanted to spotlight it because sometimes if you don't want to use a blender brush as you saw in the demo I used one side of the 527 to lay down some shadow but if you prefer to use a more traditionally constructed shader brush I will recommend you look into the 521. However, it looks very fluffy on the edges, which sometimes I like to use and not switch brushes, or I can lay shadow down on the lid and then turn the brush on its side to blur the edges through my crease. Use the same brush to lay down shadow under the lash line. I think it makes it for a seamless experience, especially for the makeup beginner who cannot be bothered with using 10 brushes for one eye look. Is fine using just one that's multitasking but it's going to deliver a great blending experience and have incredible product pickup. Now going into the MB series, Mizuho's flagship series, I have four brushes to present and the first one we'll start with, which might be my favorite out of the ones that I have, but... Mm. The MB114 Highlight Brush. This is made with a mixture of pine squirrel and pony hair. It retails for $35. I love the shape of this brush. It's slightly off kilter. I don't know if you can identify that on camera. I try to push it back, but you see it's on a slight asymmetrical angle. When I see these types of brushes, my mind goes in circles like under eye, highlighter, cheek, bronzer, all over. You could use this brush for so many tasks. I love the mixture of pine, squirrel, and pony. It just makes it for a beautiful texture here color-wise. And the silver brushed ferrule with the black handle, again, sophisticated. And for $35, let me bring you through all the things you can do with a $35 brush. Here, I primarily used it for my under eyes. The teardrop shape just makes it ideal for under eye setting. But also, I think this brush is great for bronzer application. Although a smaller brush than maybe your typically designed bronzer one, it fits perfectly into the hollows of your cheeks, but it still has enough flow and blend to blur the edges of the bronzer so it doesn't look so strict to the hollows of the cheeks. It spreads it in a way that looks like you used a bigger brush but because of the swirl and twirl and again the teardrop shape of the brush now granted because this is a pony hair mixture it's not going to be as soft as an exclusively all goat hair brush or exclusively all gray squirrel brush however if you want to forego a little bit of that softness don't mind it it's still soft however just giving you that disclaimer because if you're expecting this to feel like red squirrel okay that I mean, it's so soft, it don't feel like anything on your skin. This is a little more practical in terms of its design, of the brush blend. Again, still Fude, still in Kumano by a highly skilled artisan. So there are no sacrifices being made in, in that department. If I had to pack just one brush for all over powder application under the eye, bronzer, 
cheek, blurring, finishing, it'll be this one. It'll be this one. Highlighting, forget it. The flat side of the brush makes it so easy for you to feel where the highlighter goes. If you wanna bring it lower, you can. I think, again, for the price point, a fantastic brush. Next up, we have the MB101 Multi-Face Brush. This is made with all Sokoho goat hair, the highest grade of it, and it retails for $54. And you could just tell by this brush's shape what it could be great for. All over foundation setting, blush, bronzer, you could even get away with highlighter because it has a beautiful taper that you can place product right here on the edge and just fit right there. Fude Beauty also noted that this is exceptional with mineral powder foundation. If you are aware of mineral foundation, this doesn't feel as soft as the CMP 514. Now keep in mind the CMP brush is a gray squirrel blend and the MB brush is all Sokoho Goat. Sokoho Goat is soft, but it's not as soft as Gray Squirrel. And because this brush is pretty tightly packed, you got a lot of bristle in here, and you're gonna feel that push back of the brush. You might feel the edges of the bristles, especially when you lay it on its side like so. I prefer the CMP simply because it's smaller, it has a little more flow on the skin, and therefore I think a little more multitasking for me. You can definitely cover the same tasks with this brush. I also feel because it's a little bigger and it has more bristles in here, you're gonna have more product pickup, and if you want a little more control, you could go for the smaller brush. And I do believe there might be a smaller cheek brush in the MB line. I'm featuring this one, but if we take a look on the sides. They have the MB102 cheek brush that's a lot smaller. I would still go for this one because again, you could use it for the mineral foundation application as it was noted and also as a bigger brush for more pronounced bronzer application if you want like that a little heavier dose in terms of what the brush can deliver because of the bristle density and size. On to some eye brushes from the MB series. We have the MB125 blending brush. This is made all with gray squirrel and it retails for $23. Now this is a little brush, but what I alluded to when speaking about the CMP 527, this brush here. Now I get that the CMP brush is a lot bigger. So if you have my eye size or bigger, then yes, go with this one. But if you have a smaller eye shade, not only will this be great for product placement, as you can see here from the flat side, but the softness of the actual brush makes it ideal for crease blending for smaller eyes. Let me tell you, I use this brush to apply some Suku shadows. And although I eventually moved to the CMP brush to blur out the edges through my crease, I still find you could use the MB brush to blur out the edges through the crease. It just slides along the skin. And with Gray Squirrel, one of the softest natural hairs out there, my goodness. If you love softer shadows like Viseart, or Suku or any of those textures. They're not like pigments from Mel, okay? You want something just soft and natural looking and finish. Not only can you use this to place color on the lids, but also lower lash line and great for the inner corner. Yes, it's not like your pencil brush if you want to have more precise placement of color. You could still get away with the inner corner highlight placement using this brush, as well as some brow bone highlight here. Fantastic little brush. Again, multitasking in its design. If you just want to use one brush for your eyeshadow, I would consider this one. And Gray Squirrel for $23. I know $23 might be a lot for one eyeshadow brush, but if given the context of how much you can spend, <laughs> for instance, like on a Kolinsky eyeshadow brush that runs into the hundreds, all right, I think a great price point for an immaculately crafted brush that's gonna leave that blend looking smooth and lastly we have the mb124 multi shadow brush made with pony hair and this retails for 14 dollars now pony hair all puns intended is a workhorse type of a bristle it's going to have a little bit of pushback it's not going to be as smooth as gray squirrel or sokoho goat and again it's going to be stiffer and feel it's not going to have the same flow joe feel on the skin but great product pickup and color intensity when using this brush. I use it primarily here for inner corner highlight. You could also use this brush to place a heavier dose of color on the outer 
third of your eye for that intensity and smoke. If you want to use this brush to blend out a little bit of shadow along the lash line, fantastic for lower lash line placement. Again, it's not going to have the same flow and feel as the MB25 that has gray squirrel. So I wouldn't rely on this brush for blending. I would use it for more precise tasks. Again, inner corner highlight, lower lash line application. If you want to strike a darker color here on the outer corner, great for that task. And in terms of size, is smaller than the MB125, but not so small that you can't use it again on other areas of your eyes. If you have smaller eyes and you were thinking about using the MB124 for your crease, I would go with the MB125 because it's smoother in terms of pulling it across the skin here. If you want to get both and wondering what you're going to use the MB124 for. <laughs> Again, you could use it for more intense shadow application because this brush is a lot softer. It's not going to pick up as much as pony hair. And again, if you want to enhance the inner corner with some highlight or intensify the outer corners of the eyes, then this brush will be ideal for those tasks. And that is it for the Mizuho series. I am looking to further expand my Mizuho collection because I am very impressed by this line. Everything from the construction to the thoughtfulness put behind the brush design, the density, the different types of bristle blends that are found in the Mizuho series, I think is complicated comprehensive enough for someone to find their brush. Again, different price points offered by the brand if you're looking to get something more expensive or not as expensive. But as I said before in the beginning, an inexpensive Fude brush is still an amazing brush. You don't have to spend $500 on one powder brush to have an immaculate makeup experience. The fact that you can spend $29 on your liquid foundation brush that's going to last for a very long time. All these brushes are under $100 and I think worth considering if you were looking into Fude but you had a stricter budget, still want to grab some brushes that are going to enhance your makeup experience and maybe inspire you to wear it more often. Let me know, friends, if you have tried Mizuho before, if you have, what are your favorites in terms of individual brushes and the different lines that they offer. Huge thank you again to Fude Beauty for not only sending me the brush information, the actual brushes, but sound bites to help me with my pronunciation. I really should learn Spanish before I learn Japanese, but maybe I should just learn them at the same time. Again, a huge thank you to the team for their patience and their generosity, and to you, friends, for watching these videos and being a brush nerd with me. I will see you down in the comments, and until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Fude Extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care, and I will see you again soon.